are making life cost less. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, we are acting today to ensure fairness for every generation. We are moving with purpose to help build more homes faster. We are making life cost less. <laughs> kind of economic growth that will ensure every generation of Canadians can reach their full potential. And we're making Canada's tax system more fair by ensuring that the very wealthiest pay their fair share. this because a fair chance to build a good middle-class life, to do as well as your parents and grandparents, or better, has always been the promise of Canada. But today, millennial and Gen Z Canadians can get a good job. They can work hard. They can do everything their parents did and more. And too often, the reward remains out of reach. They look at their parents' lives and wonder, how will I ever be able to afford that? Hmm. The same anxiety haunts those of us who care about our younger generations, their parents and grandparents. What many parents have achieved for themselves, a degree of comfort and security, we want for our children and grandchildren. We want their hard work to be rewarded, as it has been for us. We want them to look forward to a future with a sense of anticipation, not angst. Mr. Speaker, this is the ninth deficit. The ninth deficit after the Prime Minister promised the budget would balance itself. And what did he do with the money? Everything he spent on has become more expensive. He's doubled the rent, doubled mortgage payments, doubled the needed down payment for a home, forced 35 homeless encampments in Halifax alone. One in four kids cannot afford food. And now he's adding $40 billion of new debt and new spending. That's $2,400 of new inflation. That is why Conservatives will vote against this wasteful inflationary budget that poor, that is like a pyromaniac spraying gas on the inflationary fire that he lit. It is getting too hot and too expensive for Canadians, and that's why we need a carbon tax election to replace him with a common sense conservative government. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I have a point that I think it would be good to get the Leader of the Opposition to offer clarity on. We presented a clear choice to Canadians. We said to Canadians, we believe that we need the power of government to get things built for young Canadians, to get things built for the people of Alberta who needed the pipeline that we got built. And we presented a clear, fiscally responsible way to finance those essential investments, increasing the inclusion rate on capital gains. I think that it is high time for the opposition, which poses as being on the side of working people, to clarify its position today. Will the opposition join us in asking those at the very top to pay a little bit more to support Canadians, or are they going to show their true colours and stand with the 0.1 per cent. That's what Canadians want to know today, Mr. Speaker. The Service told this Liberal NDP Prime Minister to stop. Stop his spending, his deficits, his inflation, and his tax hikes. But this Prime Minister blew right through that stop sign, dumping $40 billion of fuel on the inflationary fire that he started. This photo op budget is going to do nothing for average Canadians who can't afford a home and groceries today. 
Will the finance minister tell us how much each Canadian household is on the hook for the $54 billion of just interest charges on this Prime Minister's debt? An equally brief uh, answer from the Minister of Finance and Deputy Prime Minister. Let me just share then with the member opposite the good news that we got today, which is that inflation for March was 2.9%. For three months in a row, inflation in Canada has been within the Bank of Canada's target range. Thanks to Canadians, that is very good news for our country. Mr. Speaker, here we have today an inf a ninth consecutive deficit, with the budget still not balancing itself. And everything on which the Prime Minister spends gets worse and more costly. He is spent, and Canadians are broke. The country is broken. We have a doubling of housing costs. We have 8,000 people joining a Facebook group to study how they can get a meal out of a garbage can after food prices have gone up faster than at any time in a generation because of the carbon tax he's imposing on our food, a carbon tax that, with the help of the NDP, he plans to quadruple to 61 cents a litre. And today, did he learn anything from these catastrophic failures? No. He doubles down on the same failure with $40 billion of new deficits, $40 billion of new spending. That's to say $2,400 for every family in new debt and new inflationary spending. And now, for the first time in a generation, we're spending more on debt interest than on health care. That's money for bankers and bondholders rather than doctors and nurses. Right. And the great example of how wonderful government can be, given after a tremendous theatrical pause, was the government's purchase of the Trans Mountain Pipeline. What would have happened if the government had just gotten out of the way, asked the finance minister? The answer is the thing would have got built with private money yes. rather than $30 billion of taxpayer bailouts. That's right. In fact, a project the Prime Minister said would cost $5 billion is up to $30 billion. Wow. Mr. Speaker, that is 500 per cent over budget. It is $2,000 in costs for every single Canadian family for a project the private sector was going to be built, building on its own and the company that was going to build it bought out, taking the money to Texas, where they're building Texan pipelines with Canadian dollars. All of our exes are in Texas, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> And then, to close it off, we got some of the most hair-raising ideological fervor from the minister, who says that what Canadians really need is a stronger government. <laughs> well, they have created a stronger government to, in order to make for weaker and more suffering people. This is not a government that gives people everything they want. It's a government that takes everything they have. But the good news, Mr. Speaker, is we want big Canadian citizens with a smaller and more efficient government, where the state is servant and not master, where our priorities are clear, to axe the tax, build the homes, fix the budget, and stop the crime. And if, as soon as the NDP takes away its support from this Prime Minister, we will have a carbon tax election where the people will be able to make that decision for themselves in a country where they can earn powerful paychecks that buy affordable food, gas, and homes in safe neighborhoods. The country that we all knew and still love a country based on the common sense of the common people united for our common home. Your home, my home, our home. Let's bring it home.